Pastoralists in the Barclay region are interested in sustainable grazing. They want to make sure that the Barclay is here um, for the next few generations at least. There's quite a lot of interest in different grazing methods, so we want to make sure that we know what research is going on and what we already know to, so we have a good base um, that we can build on. Hi, so my name's Jack Andrews, I'm manager of Newcastle Waters Station. You're on the edge of the Barclay, half Barclay country, 10,500 square kilometres. I'm Angela Carpenter, I'm the coordinator for Barclay Land Care and Conservation Association. What I love about this area is the landscape. The Mitchell grasslands are just beautiful. There's a sense of freedom in these vast areas, working with people who are engaged. I think the advantage of hosting a day is the obvious one is A, you attend. And if it's somewhere else, sometimes you just don't get there. There's always something that happens in this business the morning before you go somewhere. And you also generally get more time with the facilitators because they, they come the night before. We're going to start the day tomorrow with uh, Paul Jones, who's from Emerald in Queensland. And Paul's going to talk about Wombiana Grazing Trial, which has been going for 17 years, and his spelling trial. Is there anything that you'd say that you might want people to take away? Or... Yeah, absolutely. Get, um, keep going with your wet season spelling. Stock around that long-term carrying capacity um, and manage it in a risk-averse manner. So yeah, small increases when you've had good seasons and big decreases when you've had, had poor seasons. Adjust your spelling in relation with seasonal conditions so you're not damaging those pastures that are being loaded up. Then we're going to have David Phelps, Dr David Phelps. He's from Longreach in Queensland. David's going to talk about Mitchell grass, the ecology, best practice management, um, drought management. What sorts of things do you reckon could make such a huge difference to the root system? Just toss some ideas around. Age of plant. Age of plant, yep. Overgrazing. How much moisture they get, the nutrition in the soil, like the quality of the soil, the type of soil they're growing in. But in this case, it is just overgrazing that's the difference here. Each one of these three seedlings has been grown in a, in a big, big pot that we filled with about one and three quarter tonne of Mitchell grass soil and they're all watered up over the five month period with the equivalent of 530 mils of, of rainfall. And the only difference is that this robust looking one that's already going to seed, it was just left alone to grow. Um, this little seedling here, um, Ian had the task of snipping it back with uh, scissors or secateurs every seven to 10 days. Every time it got up to about 10 or 12 centimetres, it was snipped back again to about uh, two or three centimetres height. We kept every, every leaf that we cut off so we could weigh those at the end to see what the difference in the total amount of uh, biomass, total grams of, of growth might be compared with the others. This particular seedling, I think it yielded in total about, um, about 12 grams. This one was about 200 grams. So absolutely massive difference. You can imagine that right across the paddock, each leaf and stem of Mitchell grass is like a little solar panel, converting the, sun, the sun's energy into, into starches and sugars that actually allow the, the plant to grow. Uh, so, you know, if you keep plucking off those solar panels all the time, it just doesn't have enough energy to, to grow enough roots, and if it doesn't have enough energy to grow enough roots, it's not getting the minerals and nutrients that it needs to grow more solar panels and it's just a vicious, vicious circle basically. See how there's leaves growing off sort of little swollen knobbly bits up the stem? Those are growing points. That's where fresh growth will come from an existing stem and one of the key things to efficient Mitchell grass growth is retaining at least four or five of those little knobbly growing points. And the reason for that is that one and a half to two inches of rain is enough to stimulate growth from those existing growing points. If it's got to come back from the right down at the base, right down at the crown, like this one will now have to, it needs more like four inches, maybe five inches of rain. Dr. Dione Walsh is going to talk about the trial that they did at Newcastle Waters here a rotational grazing trial. 
One of the main things we were asked to talk about today was some of the grazing systems work that we've done in the Northern Territory and in particular in the Barclay region. And we've done some different grazing trials looking at things like cell grazing, rotational grazing using just waters rather than waters and fencing and comparing that to the traditional management in the Barclay which is continuous grazing usually in big paddocks that are sometimes poorly watered. And through all the work that we've done over the last sort of 15 years in the Barclay, we've discovered that once paddocks are well watered, that is the cattle can get to all parts of the paddock sort of no further than about three to five kilometres from water. Once that development is at that level, most of the paddock is accessible and you can't actually achieve any greater production out of the country by adding either more water or more fencing than that. The benefit of putting in some more fencing than we have currently in the Barclay is that it allows you to do some other management things that are sometimes not possible to be done at the moment with really big paddocks. Things like doing wet season spelling or mobbing up cattle into smaller mobs and rotating them around so that country's getting a rest at different times of the year. And it also can lead through into other husbandry activities, for example, if you want to do controlled mating or you want to run a particular supplement program or something like that. We call ourselves pastoralists, but then occasionally have a tendency to forget that what we're about is pasture, not necessarily just about growing cattle. You can get insulated in your own little world. You just, everything's so busy and fast and you, you, you find something that you think's working and maybe it is working, but you could tweak it a bit. You come to these sort of things and it, lets you, it just lets you broaden your horizons a bit. So I hope today that we've, um, people have either, either learned something new about sustainable grazing or reinforce something that they already know and that's one of the goals of Barclay Landcare is to look after the rangelands for future generations.